Hello and welcome back to the Movie Memo Recaps. Today we are going to recap a 2018 movie titled Silencer. Please be advised that there might be spoilers ahead. In the opening scene, we are introduced to American shooters in charge of an operation to extract the leader of a terrorist faction from Iraq. This Iraqi individual sought protection from American forces because he contained critical intelligence that would benefit them. Meanwhile, other members of the extreme organization were secretly making their way to the rendezvous spot. Clearly, they were not going to let their leader fall into the hands of U.S. soldiers without a battle. Their goal was clear, to impede U.S. military activities, with the primary goal of neutralizing the sniper group. In a planned maneuver, the terrorist gang successfully identified and eliminated one of the snipers. As the situation worsened, they were able to corner the team, forcing Frank, the leader of the American snipers, to resort to an unexpected and severe measure, murdering the terrorist leader and his family. A decade has passed since that fatal tragedy. Frank, who has long since left the military, does not hide the fact that the shooting incident continues to haunt him, a weight too heavy to share with anyone. After leaving the military, Frank devotes a major part of his time to his auto repair garage, which is his source of income. On this particular day, after finishing a repair operation on a customer's vehicle, Frank and one of his staff were about to deliver the car to its rightful owner. As the evening progressed, Frank, who now lives with his wife, Cassie, and stepdaughter, Shannon, gathered around the table for dinner. During the meal, Cassie stated her desire to spend the weekend with Shannon and Frank. However, when Frank explained that he wanted to personally deliver a customer's recently repaired car, Cassie insisted on accompanying him. Despite his doubts, Frank eventually agreed to Cassie's repeated request, allowing her and Shannon to accompany him. This move made him nervous, especially since the customer in question was a former colleague who had become a legendary crime boss. When they arrived at the criminal lord's home, a series of unexpected events occurred. Due to unanticipated circumstances, Frank found himself in a confrontation with one of the crime lord's minions, resulting in a heated exchange. Shortly after, a man named Lazarus, known as the crime lord's right hand, emerged on the scene and immediately assumed control. Lazarus then accompanied Frank to see the intimidating mafia leader Leo. Shortly after meeting Leo, his daughter Nikki entered. It was her birthday and Leo had prepared a bicycle among her birthday presents. Nikki requested to take her new bike for a ride. Leo seemed hesitant at first but then he allowed her on a condition that she doesn't drive on the main road. Afterwards, Leo presented Frank with an envelope filled with cash, significantly exceeding the amount needed for the auto repairs. It became clear that Leo had purposefully contributed an excessive sum, implying an ulterior motivation. He tried to persuade Frank to work for him, this time as a hired assassin. Despite the appealing offer, Frank stayed firm and declined. Surprisingly, Leo insisted on handing up the cash envelope before allowing Frank to exit. Frank nevertheless harbored a strong desire to rejoin Leo's ranks. However, his family's presence weighed heavily on his mind. Accepting Leo's proposal would definitely put Cassie and Shannon in danger, a risk Frank was hesitant to take. As dusk fell, Frank sat transfixed to the television, absorbed by a program revealing the awful news of Leo's daughter who had died in a car accident due to a drunk driver. Frank was genuinely moved by the news, knowing how much Leo loved his daughter. Before long, Lazarus paid Frank a visit and delivered a message from Leo himself. The mafia lord requested Frank's assistance in seeking vengeance for the death of his beloved daughter. This unexpected turn of events left Frank with a moral quandary. Frank first declined unwilling to re-enter the dangerous world of gangsters. However, when confronted with Lazarus' terrifying ultimatum, he found himself with no choice. Meanwhile, Cassie noticed the arrival of Lazarus and Leo's thugs at their home, prompting her to wonder about their sudden presence. Frank, on the other hand, chose to keep the specifics from her, which irritated her and prompted her to slap him. Despite her rage, he remained steadfast and left with Lazarus leaving Cassie puzzled behind. Leo, still grieving over his daughter's death, welcomed Frank to his house. 
Leo pleaded with Frank to exact revenge on the individual responsible for the accident. In a tragic turn of events, Leo threatened to reveal Frank's ominous history to Cassie if he refused. Driven by a genuine desire to protect his wife from the darkest aspects of his background, Frank eventually agreed to Leo's request, launching a catastrophic course of action. The following day, Lazarus provided Frank with extensive documentation on the hidden, intoxicated perpetrator, allowing him to quickly begin his task. Frank quickly identified the perpetrator's location. With steely determination, he raced to position himself, methodically preparing his sniper rifle for the impending action. As Frank laid eyes on the offender, nestled in his family's arms at home, a flood of memories returned. It was a frightening reminder of the catastrophic error he had made a decade prior, a burden that still gnawed at his conscience. Frank selected a different path, determined not to make the same terrible mistake twice. He chose not to take the life of the culprit, instead allowing the authorities to arrest him and pursue justice through legal methods. Unbeknownst to Frank, Leo had discreetly sent one of his men to watch him and report every move back to him. When Leo found that Frank had decided not to take matters into his own hands and instead let the authorities deal with the offender, he was furious. Leo then directed Lazarus to carry out a terrifying order to kill both the offender and Frank. The stakes had risen drastically, putting Frank in severe danger. The unexpected entrance of Lazarus and Leo's thugs caught Cassie, alone at home, off guard in a terrifying turn of events. Tragically, they shot her and kidnapped her daughter Shannon, further exacerbating the situation. Simultaneously, Lazarus and his group successfully apprehended the offender from police custody, transporting him to a dark fate sanctioned by Leo for a horrible death. Amidst the chaos, Frank returned home to find his wife injured. Fueled by stress and concern, he quickly grabbed her, determined to bring Cassie the medical assistance she desperately needed. The severity of the situation weighed heavily on Frank as he raced against the clock. Seeking assistance in this desperate position, Frank approached his former sniper squad partner, Timothy, and begged him to help rescue Shannon from her captivity. Fortunately, Timothy consented to team up with Frank on this crucial mission. Frank arrived at the hospital to see Cassie, visibly heartbroken by the horrific turn of events that had befallen her and their daughter. Cassie's emotions were high, a mix of pain and rage towards Frank, whom she believed had concealed the truth and thus caused this disaster. Frank sought Cassie's apologies, and he offered a heartfelt apology for the deception. He promised her that he and Timothy would do all possible to ensure Shannon's safe return, and he urged Cassie to find consolation and rest during this difficult time. Frank and Timothy hurriedly arrived at Leo's house, only to confront an unsettling sight. Leo and Lazarus were conspicuously absent, and Shannon was nowhere to be seen. Their search revealed only one remaining henchman. While Timothy successfully subdued him, an unexpected change of circumstances led to a dangerous confrontation. When confronted with imminent peril, the henchman made a desperate attempt to reclaim his firearm, forcing Timothy to make an immediate, life-or-death decision. In the midst of immense pressure, he acted instinctively, killing the man and complicating their search for Shannon's location. The shift in events increased their objective's urgency. In the middle of his tremendous sadness over his daughter's death, Leo drove Shannon to his hometown. Shannon, despite Leo's tender care and treatment as if she were his own, couldn't overcome the terror that seized her, yearning for her mother's return. Meanwhile, Leo's wife, Marta, became increasingly concerned about her husband's actions. She viewed his plan to kidnap Shannon as an extreme step and begged him to put an end to the ordeal. Unfortunately, Leo stayed steadfast, ignoring his wife's pleas, driven by his own agony and determination. The tensions within Leo's family only exacerbated the problem. Frank, who had worked with Leo for a long time, knew everything there was to know about Leo and Lazarus. Together with Timothy, they set their sights on one of Leo's largest drug labs in Mexico, seeing it as an ideal place for incapacitating Leo's henchmen and gathering critical information regarding Shannon's whereabouts. Simultaneously, Lazarus, astute and forewarned, anticipated Frank's pursuit. In reaction, he issued a stern command to one of his most formidable enforcers, Nelson, 
assigning him the goal of eliminating Frank. The stakes were rising quickly, with danger waiting at every turn. Frank happened to run into Nelson in a neighborhood pub, surprising him. Frank confronted Nelson with measured force, demanding that he reveal Shannon's location. Meanwhile, Timothy dispatched the last of Leo's guys. Once they had the critical facts, Frank made the tough decision to end Nelson's life. Frank and Timothy prepared for the impending encounter, knowing that Shannon was being held captive at Leo's home. Their dedication was steadfast as they prepared to face Leo and his fearsome squad, all for the sake of saving Shannon. As Lazarus rallied his soldiers to secure Leo's home, expecting to stop any prospective penetration, he underestimated the abilities of Frank and Timothy, both seasoned snipers. In the ensuing conflict, Lazarus and his men were outmatched, surrendering to Frank's and Timothy's strategic abilities. Unfortunately, success came at a cost. Frank had to charge forward alone due to Timothy's severe injuries. Leo saw the tides turning against them and raced to grasp Shannon, flashing a shotgun in a desperate attempt to flee. The stakes were higher than ever, with Shannon's life hanging in the balance. In a final showdown, Frank addressed Leo, pleading with him to release Shannon and willing to spare his life in exchange. Marta, watching the dangerous situation, made an impassioned plea, imploring Leo to let Shannon leave and reminding him that she had her own family who loved her deeply. Unfortunately, Leo remained belligerent, determined to assault Frank. Shannon made a risky move, biting Leo's hand to divert his attention for a moment. Frank seized this momentary chance and hurled a knife, striking Leo's heart with fatal precision. The deed put an end to Leo's reign of terror. With Shannon safe, Frank kept his promise to Cassie, who had found forgiveness and accepted Frank for who he was. Together, they began the reconstruction process. Thanks for watching. If you are new, don't forget to subscribe for more of these recaps. Until next time, have a nice day.